Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about shadows. Uh, this is a piece from a student from last year. And you will see that when you have objects in your image, in order to make them look like they're part of the landscape, they need to have a cast shadow for them. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to, and I'm over here on these green layers, right? I have the, um, the grass layers and I have the cows themselves. So what I want to do is create, and we're gonna just ignore the fact that she has one here, but I'll walk you through this process. So let's add a new layer. And then on that layer, we can uh, start to add some black paint. So we're just gonna make sure that our brush is using black paint here. And you can make that brush uh, whatever you want it to be there. And then I'm gonna start to add some shadow underneath the cow. And we kind of want it to be relevant to the cow shape and placement and that kind of thing. Now, if the light that we were dealing with was particularly sideways, and we can tell kind of from this column that maybe we want a little bit more of like a cast shadow this way, you could decide where that shadow might go and add a little bit more of it. Then we can go to the opacity and bring that down so that you are seeing that through the, uh, seeing the layers through that black, right? So there's some transparency there. The other option that we have, um, we can do a little bit of that. We can also do a uh, darken or, um, multiply option with that and still have some of that opacity there to sort of see how that goes. Now, you'll notice that the shadow is kind of going over the feet. So you could decide if you want it to do that or not. If you bring that underneath the cow layer, you'll see that it really just stays on the, uh, whatever layers are below it, right? So the cows are over that and then the shadows are underneath. So decide what you need for that. You could also come over to the pillars. And for example, the one on the right is primarily the one we're dealing with here. And again, look at your light source. And in this case, the, the pillar has a pretty strong light source. You can do this same thing. So let's add a new layer. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow hit it this way. We want our shadows to kind of go all the same direction, right? As if they go with your, um, if the light source had a vanishing point or a, a, a origin point, they would go opposite that. So similarly here, I'm gonna bring down the opacity a little bit so you can see through. And uh, then I want to not see the shadow on the column. So I'm gonna put it below the column so we don't see that uh, showing up on that particular one, right? If you find that you are still seeing some shadow where you don't want it, you can always go get your eraser tool. Make sure you're on your uh, co oops, column shadow, right? right? Layer, labeling your layers helps. You can go in and then clean that up as much as you need to, right? You may decide that you actually want uh, a little bit more shadow to appear here because right? that's happening on the, the little bottom bit that, I don't know where that's showing up, but showing up there. You could also decide that you want this, if you put it above it, to have even more shadow, right? You could give this a more distinct uh, shadow effect if you wanted to create a stronger light source feeling uh, within your uh, perspective project. Right, so try and be as consistent as you can. Maybe you want that to blend out. If you want it to blend out, um, you could also have that go on with a, uh, a gradient. That may be more hassle than it's worth. Um, so you could also go in if you're like, okay, I want that to fade in. You can with the eraser tool, 
uh, do an opacity on your eraser tool. So you're only erasing like 50% of it. So if you see this, I can erase, ooh, that's really harsh. It's because my edge is harsh and what I want is a softer edge. Pay attention to how things blend. So 50% blending will take off 50% of the shadow, right? And that'll start to blend in a little bit. Um, and you can see how that is more subtle than the sharp edge that I was dealing with earlier. So a 50% burn or um, erasing. And then just make sure you go back and put this to 100%. Otherwise, you'll confuse yourself later when you're trying to erase something and it's not happening all the way. So there are a couple of options for you for uh, your shadows being created with a new layer, some black paint, a little bit of transparency, opacity changing, maybe a little bit of an eraser softening to make the gradient. Okay, let's do one more thing with a shadow. We're gonna add a layer and we're gonna make a hallway shadow. Now the thing about this hallway shadow is it's going to appear over a bunch of different layers. So we kind of have to figure out where that's gonna go. Let's define that so that it's really only gonna be visible in the area that I want it to. And we're gonna try and skip around the cow. You might have to, you might have to do a little bit better job that you're selecting than what I am doing. And I'm going to approximate where that goes on the ceiling as well. Although I think that might be a beam. I'm not quite sure how that works. Anyway, there's the idea that I'm going, there's the area that I'm going to put the shadow. Okay, so I am going to, instead of just dumping black, I'm going to apply a gradient. Now this gradient here is, it's underneath your paint bucket tool, right? So your gradient tool. And the default on the basic is uh, black and white. It'll come up like this, okay? So what I want, instead of black and white, I want black to clear. So if you double click on the gradient, it will bring this up. To change that from white to clear, you need to click on this top square and then go down to opacity and take that all the way down to zero. Now you can see it goes from black to transparent. Um, and this will make a nice smooth gradient. You can make that, move this a little bit further along if you want to, so it happens a little more gradually, or you can have it happen a little more um, a little more gradually is good, actually. Okay, so I'm going to say okay. And now you can see up here, it's a black to transparent. Then I am going to go from this edge and I'm going to pull out past my, uh, my, the edge because I want to have it go a little bit of black all the way out. And then I'm going to let go. Now you can see how that, again, goes partly from black to transparent. And then it's not so much the opacity that I need to deal with, but this is something that I can then use my uh, darken blending tool or multiply, depending on how serious I want. I'm gonna go darken. And then I can go in and deal with the opacity and dial that back. So you can see how it looks like you're going down the hallway and it's getting a little bit darker down the hallway. And you can apply that as gradually as you need to. So there's my hallway shadow. And because it's over the top of everything, because all the rest of this is down here, I don't really have to worry about like whether or not it's hitting this wall versus this grass texture versus these grass textures, right? So these shadows can go at the top if you are containing them so that they only show up on that part of the image. So that's another way that you can differentiate between, say, two walls that or two buildings maybe that have a a similar uh, texture and you want to make it look like it's a little bit darker on that side. So there's another way to do it and if it's getting darker as you go down an area, this gradient is your best bet for making that happen gradually.